After a decade in corporate and finance and becoming a parent, I found my 9 to 5 job a drain on my time and energy. And honestly, I felt like I wasn't maximizing my fullest potential. On top of this, a bad incident at work became the tipping point. More on that later, leading me to a significant mindset shift. I knew that I had to lean my ladder on the right wall, or the one leading to the wealth game, not the status game. As Naval Ravikant puts it, wealth isn't just about money, it's about options. The status game is a zero sum game. You often have to step on others to climb. But wealth is more than just options. It's about the freedom to do whatever you want, whenever you want. So in today's video, we'll explore the concept of financial independence through the words of Charlie Munger. Munger has distilled his financial philosophy into five key principles, no fluff, just actionable steps that can change your approach to money and life. Let's go. So you want the freedom to do whatever you want, whenever you want. Investing is your ticket and the magic of compound interest is the engine that powers it. So unlike a nine to five job where your earnings are capped by the hours that you work, investing allows your money to grow exponentially over time. When it comes to investing, Munger shares a crucial piece of advice, fish where the fish are. In simpler terms, this means focus your investments where you have the best chance of success and where opportunities are abundant. Investing smartly means focusing on industries or sectors where you have the most knowledge and experience. So say you work in the tech sector and you're well-versed in emerging technologies and trends. This positions you to make more informed investments in tech companies, allowing you to assess the business model, growth potential, and even spot opportunities that others might miss. Now, let's say if you're in the tech industry, but you've ventured into unfamiliar sectors like healthcare or consumer products, this can be akin to gambling, given the lack of expertise. So without a deep understanding of the market, market dynamics, and regulations, you're taking unnecessary risks. By concentrating your investments in areas you know well, you can identify undervalued companies with high growth potential. So play to your strength. If you're not an expert in a particular area, collaborate with those who are. Recognizing your strength and knowing when to seek help can significantly improve your investment strategy. Munger has famously quoted, the first $100,000 is but you gotta do it. It's tough, but crucial for building wealth. He argues that this is a foundation step towards becoming a millionaire. So how do you get there? There are a number of ways that you can get there. One, you save. Two, you invest. So you can start with automatic transfers to a high yield savings account, but don't just stop at saving. Consider investing in low cost index funds. You can invest in funds like the Vanguard 500 index fund, the Schwab S&P 500 index, or Fidelity 500 index fund. And you might be asking why index funds? According to Spiva, a part of the S&P Global, only 29% of actively managed funds beat the S&P 500 in 2019, and that number dropped to just 9% in 2021. Index funds usually match the market and cost less in fees, making them a smarter choice for long-term financial gains. Now, starting early is a bonus. The sooner you start, the more you benefit from compound interest, boosting your chances of hitting that million-dollar mark by retirement. To optimize for this, set specific saving goals and budget wisely. Now, if your current income isn't cutting it for savings, it's time to get creative. A side hustle can be the ticket to reaching that $100,000 milestone. Simply put, if you're not earning enough to save, you need to find ways to make more money. If you have high interest debts, this should be your first enemy to conquer. There's no point in saving if your debt is growing faster than your savings rate. So for more actionable tips on saving your first $100,000, you can check out my video over here. Now let's delve into equity, your ownership stake in an asset, which could be a business, real estate, or other forms of investment. Owning equity is essentially buying a ticket to the asset's future success. His advice on equity is both simple and profound. So invest in quality businesses and keep them for the long term. But he takes it a step further by emphasizing the importance of moats. It's a term used to describe a business's competitive advantage that protects it from its competitors. A strong moat could be anything from a well-known brand and patented technology to cost advantages and network effects. Why are moats important? Because they ensure the long-term profitability and the success of the business you're investing in. When you own equity in a company with a strong moat, you're not just 
betting on its current success, its current performance. You're investing in future resilience and growth. But the journey doesn't end at buying and holding. It's also about reinvesting your earnings. He considers reinvestment the cornerstone of compounding wealth. When you reinvest, you're essentially buying more shares of the company you already own, thereby increasing your share of its future profits. So before you jump into any type of equity ownership, make sure you do your due diligence. Understand the company's financials, evaluate its management, and get a grasp of its industry landscape. This will help you make more informed decisions and mitigate investment risks. Now remember, the aim isn't to time the market for quick gains, it's to invest in businesses with strong moats that promise long-term success. Living below your means is a cornerstone of Charlie Munger's financial philosophy. It sounds simple, spend less than you earn, but in a world obsessed with consumerism, it's easier said than done. Munger insists that this principle is not just about penny pinching, it's about setting the stage for long-term financial freedom. When you live below your means, you free up resources to save and invest, accelerating your journey to financial independence. Now, there's a research by Thomas Stanley in The Millionaire Next Door, and after studying 500 millionaires, he found that millionaires often live frugally, budget meticulously, and keep a close eye on their spending. But it's not just about financial freedom. Living below your means allows you to focus on what truly matters in life, liberating you from constant financial stress and worries. Now you might be wondering, do I have to give up everything I love? No, not at all. I'm a firm believer in Ramit Sethi's concept of conscious spending. Conscious spending is about allocating a percentage of your take-home income for guilt-free spending on things that genuinely bring you joy. So the key is to be deliberate about where your money goes and to cut costs mercilessly on things that don't matter to you. So for me, one of those things is treating myself to a restful day with a massage once a month. It's not just an indulgence, it's a way to recharge my mind, body, and energy so I have more to give in all areas of my life. So think about what truly matters to you and allocate your resources accordingly. Remember, it's not about cutting out everything you love. It's about spending wisely on the things that bring you the most joy and cutting back on the rest. Lifelong learning is key to achieving financial security and freedom. The curious mind is an investor's greatest asset. And interestingly enough, statistics show that millionaires read an average of over 24 books per year, highlighting the critical role of continuous learning. But it's not just about accumulating knowledge, it's about applying it. I spent eight years in college and graduate school, and while formal education is valuable, it's crucial to ensure that that knowledge that you've gained is both relevant and actionable. So focus on applying what you learn, not just on theory. Those are the five timeless principles by Charlie Munger. If you're interested, you might want to check out my other video here on how the average millionaire has seven streams of income. But before you go, it would really make my day if you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.